Now then guys, how you doing? Welcome back and today you're going to join me in Portugal when we rebuild Boa Vista. Now why Boa Vista? Now I haven't been to Portugal and Portugal is one of my go-to places on Football Manager when you know the likes of Porto, Benfica, Sporting and even Braga, you know, they do bits for you. They've got decent teams to start off with. Good place to build your reputation up, especially if you're doing some kind of glory run to save. So I always used to go to Portugal and start off my career there. Now, obviously, there was Boa Vista. Boa Vista, last win in the league, back at the turn of the millennium. It's quite a similar trajectory to Deportivo La Coruña that I'd done a couple of rebuilds ago. They win the league on the turn of the millennium, and then they fall apart quite a bit. They've never been anywhere near since. So my only aim for this save is to just win that Portuguese Premier League crown once again. We've obviously got the super attacker as well to potentially go for. However, for me, I just just want that bit of Premier League silverware. Just one time, just once, once in five years would be absolutely fantastic. As we've got to overturn some absolute juggernauts, like I say, Porto, Benfica, Sporting are really going to take some catch in the really are. So yes, if you are new to the channel, obviously please like and subscribe. There's plenty more rebuilds for you to scroll through and have a look at. All with their own unique twist and drama and all that stuff going on. But yes, if you haven't already, like I say, like and subscribe. Let's push this channel on. And if you are a regular subscriber and a regular viewer, as always, thank you very much. means a lot. But let's get in to what is without doubt going to be a mammoth challenge. So here we go then, day one in charge of Boa Vista. Now, this team, I'm not expecting big things in the first couple of seasons. I think I should be in a position where I shouldn't really be under pressure to lose my job. You know, I don't think there's any expectation for me to win the league or get into Europe in the first couple of seasons anyway. But when we look at the club history, like I say, the turn of the millennium, the year 2000-2001 season, we end up winning the league. We then have a second place finish. And we cruise along, you know, and then we get relegated just out of nowhere, 2007-2008, we get relegated and we suffer a back-to-back -back relegation only to find ourselves in 2014-15 getting back into the Premier League and then we just cruise along again. Last season we had a 13th place finish, so we just need to work on improving that. The Tacker de Portugal, we last won in 1997 and the Super Tacker in 1997 as well. So we had a fairly decent run up to the millennium. The year 2000 was fantastic for us, 2001 weren't too bad neither and then it all starts to go a bit, yeah, a bit down the crapper and then we end up getting relegated. So, first of all then, let's have a look at these finances. So finances wise, I'm minus 4 119 pound in the overall balance before the season has even started however got no transfer budget that is a problem straight away we'll have to have a look at the squad shortly and see if there's a big enough squad for me to sell players on as we are getting 100 percent of transfer revenue being made available wage budget wise is 64,000, and i'm spending 61,000, so not too bad and when i click on the debt and loans there is no debt 419,000. i think that's exactly the same there so realistically we haven't got no debt so what about the club vision? And I did say that they won't be expecting us to get into Europe, and I don't think they are. A top half finish, there you go, in the Premier League. Uh, the the attack of the Portugal are expecting a fifth round finish as a minimum, just to grow the club's reputation. They just expect us to maintain a top half finish for the next five years. So for me, as long as I get top half finishes, I'm going to be securing my job, and that's the main thing. You know, in a couple of saves, I've, I've edged close, especially when we've diced with relegation. But this time round, I think we can just maintain that top half finish and then just push on. How many teams are actually in the league, first of all? All just to work it out so there's 18 teams so basically being in the top nine will be fantastic top six actually gets some kind of european football i think let's have a look so rules wise then if i get into the top six i can get the europa conference league so there's a lot more european places than i expected i was expecting only the top couple of teams to get into the champions league and then only one team for the europa league and one team for the conference so top six teams not bad when we look at the club culture, then I've got to develop players using the club's youth system, play high-tempo pressing football. We'll develop. I'm going to go for an attacking style of football anyway. Five-year plan is to sign young players to develop for a profit, sign players to sell for a profit. So it's all about money balling here. And I quite like that approach. You know, get players in on a cheap and sell them for large amounts of money. That is a winner. You know, that's the way you've got to play it anyway. Competitions-wise, like I say, we've got the Tacker de Portugal and the Premier League. What is the expectation? Let's just have a look then at the season preview. We're expecting an 11th place finish, 400 to 1 to win the league. It's quite close there. Porto, Benfica, Sporting and Braga, obviously, the four big teams. Porto and Benfica, obviously, the two that's going to be challenging. But Sporting, don't count them out. Squad-wise, then, let's have a look at it. So, it, there's a big old squad here. And we've got some more players. The first player I can see is Rafael Bracali, 40-year-old goalkeeper. Wowzers. But who is our top earner at the club? So almost 20 grand, Reggie Cannon. An American with 22 caps, one goal, 23-year-old. And he's a left-back. God, that's big, big money. And then there's nobody anywhere needed. Where does he come from? How have we managed to get that kind of money? Two and a half million pounds from Dallas. That is an incredible amount of money. 
Like when you consider our next nearest earner is on three thousand nine hundred pound. Who's the highest transfer valued player? Gustavo Sawyer, who is a twenty eight year old Brazilian, can play behind the striker. Realistically, I don't really think I'm going to have the width. So yes, he's currently valued at five point six million. Where do we get him from? Botev Plovdiv from Bulgaria. We got him on a free transfer as well. He has been about this guy. That's our highest turner, obviously our highest value player. What about our best player? So our best player is Sebastian Perez, 28-year-old Colombian central midfielder. So we've got quite a decent squad, I think, looking at those three players, if I judge my squad by those three players, that is. And tactically, I'm probably going to go with the diamond, but as I've just seen, I've got a couple of players with good width. But yeah, that's probably how I would set up, playing a fluid custom counter-attack. But I'd probably play on a more positive approach. I think we've got the quality to do some damage there. But yeah, early signs are promising. Squad dynamics wise then, Team Cohesion is abysmal, club atmosphere is poor and managerial support is good. Anybody opposed me for early doors? No, so nobody's that unhappy about me joining the club. I've got 8 players as supporters, 20 players that have no real opinion of us. So that is it. So what we're going to do then is I've got all this money to spend here. I'm going to have to generate some funds and try and dip my toe into the transfer market. I don't think there's too much to do. Looking at the initial overview of the squad, we'll look quite decent. I just need to thin it out and then get some funds back into the overall balance. So yes, you'll join me to start season one where I try to get a top half finish. Right, so we're at the start of season one then, guys, and I've done absolutely nothing as... You can see there, I've brought some money in, £59,000 in the bank. My wage spend is now 58000 Obviously, I'm about £6,000 under the wage budget. But when we look at the transfers, they've already done the business for us. £6.5 million being spent bringing players in. The highest player being brought in was Awazim from Porto, 24-year-old Nigerian, with 21 caps and one goal. He was with us last season, £4.3 million. We've sent him straight on loan, which is not ideal. You know, some of these deals already done. As you can see here, players that have let go... Alexandra Martino, this is actually Jean Martino's brother, and I had to just have a, a quick look to see, but yeah, as you can see, there you go, brother there. But I've let players go for next to nothing, there's nobody there worth a mention. Fran has left, Jariel De Santis, and Yao Convales. Now, this guy, I got a little bit of a grief for, 20 year old goalkeeper, apparently he was one of our hottest prospects, but he has disappeared. But yeah, I haven't really done anything as far as the squad goes, so when we look at the tactics and whatnot, I'm still probably going to line up this way with the 4 4 2 diamond, with Biervand in goal, Ferreira, Perozo, Ilori, and Nathan at the back, with Javi Garcia and Holden Roll. Makuta and Perez with Gustavo Sauer at the tip of my diamond and then the Mora and Moraes up front. Now Moraes is the best prospect at the club, currently two star potential ability, four and a half star. We, he's been with us for three years, he played four games last season, finishing 12, composure 12, acceleration and pace ball 13. We'll see what he can do, he's only 17 year old, you never know, he's valued up to £1 million, he might score some goals, we might be able to sell him on. So squad dynamics wise haven't really changed. Team cohesion is poor, club atmosphere is good, my geo support's good. Have I got any more players to support us? No, nine players support us, 15 players have no real opinion of us. And like I said about these competitions, we've actually got another one, Alliance Cup, whatever that is. That must be some League Cup competition. We've obviously got the Pataca de Portugal and the Portuguese Premier League. So having a look at this again, the season preview, we're expecting 11 pace finish, 450 to 1. No players in the Media Dream 11, which doesn't surprise. There's going to be an absolute challenge this season. A mid table finish, I'll take obviously top half is what we're aiming for and then looking at the schedule wise we've got Estoril, Portimonense, Falamilicao, Tondela and Moranese as my first five games before we hit Porto on the 18th of September then I've got Benfica so we've got Porto and Benfica, Vitgumares decent team as well, Vittoria you know they can do some serious damage to us so if we can break into you know ideally I'd love a top six finish it means we're getting some kind of European football next season but a top half finish is what we're aiming for this season so not a lot being done but I'm not overly worried about that there's a lot of players joined the squad let's get um, fully integrated in and let's get our path finished so yes I'll see you on the other side well then guys so season one is over fourth place finish Europa League football next season completed lads see you later thanks for watching there you go only joking but fourth place finish you know in the grand scheme of things though looking at it there's not too many teams there that really should have caused us a problem. I know I spoke before the break about a top par finish and, and whatnot, but when you look at the teams, Vittorio Guimaraes ended up with a 12th place finish. We did actually pick Braga to fourth place, you know, that's breaking into those top four teams. But as you can see, we're going to have a look at this league table in a little bit more detail as 
there's such a breakaway. There's 22 points between us and third place Benfica. 23 points between us and Porto who won it. So it's tight at the top. You can see there, Porto and Sporting actually finishing on the same amount of points. Goal difference, it must be head-to-head -head there as Sporting have actually got a better goal difference of plus 59. But goal difference for Paul X teams, you know, like 58 plus. So Braga, I would say, is a major scalp for us there to get into the top four. But that does mean that we have got full Europa League football. And that is only good for reputation. Now, I wouldn't have minded a top eight finish, I would have imagined. That's where we'd have been. But that kind of European football, you know, Maritimo in there as well, breaking into sixth place. But looking at these teams, like I said, there's not too many of those other teams that should really be causing us a problem. And then when we're looking at the past positions, we've basically been sat in fourth since, if we go from here, match day 12. We had a little bit of a dip when we got smashed 4-1 by Sporting. But then, yeah, we've sat more or less there for the entire season. Well, there's no more or less about it. We actually have Braga. They were chasing us, you know, towards the back end of the season, match day 28, all the way to the end. We've actually, I can see there, we drew 1-1 with them on the final game of the season. Porto topped the league, having a laugh. And then, yeah, it's basically just been fought out between those three teams. Got to feel a little bit for Benfica, who dropped off towards the back end of the season. But still, you know, we were absolutely nowhere near them. Competitions-wise then, obviously, in the league, we've seen that we got that fourth-place finish. Tacker de Portugal were knocked out in the semi-final by Braga. So Braga have had us in the cup. We actually lost 3-2 there on aggregate. one nil away from home, cost us. And then we were knocked out in the first phase by Aruka. Now, I think we were already out of this cup before the league even started, and I hadn't even noticed. This is Braga got to the final there and got smashed by Porto, which means, obviously, in the final this one, they got to the final there as well and lost one nil in extra time to Sporting. I don't know if Braga had actually won any of those cup competitions. Let's just have a look. Would they have beaten us into the Europa League places? Because that's usually the case, isn't it? So fourth place finish here doesn't actually say anything. We'll have to have a look. But I'm assuming the cup the cup must count for like a push in the competitions. It usually does. Winning one of those domestic cups gets you into the Europa League. So we may have dodged a bullet there by the fact that Braga lost in both of the finals. So what kind of war chest we got? Well, there you go. We've got £5.8 million to play with next season. 100% of transfer revenues being made available. The wage budget has took quite a hike, though. 79000 there as we're currently spending fifty four. Overall balance, though, £3.1 million in the red. And that's net debt as well. So we might need to start looking at clear on that. But again, you know... We normally clear everything over the summer and they're just operating costs have run the club throughout the season. And we, like I say, we make it all back in season tickets, gate receipts, whatever else, and outgoing transfers as well. Squad dynamics wise, then it's starting to look a little bit better now. With team keys and average, club atmosphere is very good, managerial support good. I've only got three players that have got any issues really, two of them wanting to leave. Four better playing time. I've got two team leaders, Garcia and Sawyer, both my club captain and vice captain there. 29 player supporters, three players have no real opinion, and nobody opposes us. When we look at the social group, I've got quite a split there, a core social group and a secondary social group. We're still working on getting those players in there, but there's going to be a high turnover of players again this summer. So looking at the player stats this season, Petr Musa scored 34 goals. Wowzer. This guy's on loan from us from Slavia Prague. Now, do I get the option to buy him? Optional free, three million pounds. Big decision there, guys, to maybe keep this guy with us. Finishing 16, composure top. He's got decent pace and acceleration as well. Balance 16. You know what? While you're watching, I am going to make that offer. So £3 million. I've got the opportunity. Free k per week as well. That's the one thing that's killing us. We haven't really got the clout in the wages. When I've put offers in before, like the maximum wage I can offer somebody is like two and a half grand. So there may be a problem there, but we'll give it a go. I want to see how Musa actually compares to other players in the league. So how did he get on? He was actually the top goal scorer in the league. Considering the amount of goals that have been scored by everybody else, Musa finished on 29 goals. Tony Martinez on 27. I bet this guy's an absolute boss. Look at those attributes in comparison. Mehdi Taremi is a quality player as well. 29-year-old. £52 million pounds this guy's value. That, that's the problem. You know, We have got no real sale value in these players. But top goal scorer, who cares? We've got the top goal scorer in the league this season. So looking at the rest of it then, Musa had the highest damage rate at 7.64. Most assists was Nathan with 11. Best pass completion was Perozo with 96%. Most player of the match awards was Musa with 15. Most yellow cards, Garcia with 9. And Kenji Gore got one red card. That was it all season. So when we're looking at the team stats then, goal scored 65, which is the fourth best. 49 goals conceded, which is the seventh worst. Need to work on that defensively. With the diamond, we can be a little bit exposed to the wide attacks. But overall, you know, we've got to work just on the quality of my back four. 
yellow cards 55 which is the seventh best one red card which is the best and average attendance just over 11,000, which is the sixth best. So there you go then, guys. The first season down. We're going to have full Europa League football next season. I don't know at what stage we come in. I'm hoping it's the full group stage draw. It might be that we've got to go through a couple of playoff qualifying rounds. Who knows? But yes, we're going to work hard in this transfer window to push the squad on. As you can see, I could potentially be spending £3 million on Musa. But when it's a top goal scorer in the league, you've got to spend the money. Right guys, so we're back at the start of Season 2. There's been a little bit of upheaval, I would say, is a lot of my players have wanted to move on to bigger and better things, quite bizarrely, considering we're playing in the Europa League this season. The transfer value of my players, I think I mentioned it just before the break, that there's no real transfer value there. So any players that I'm selling on, even the better players of the club, are only valued around about a million pounds, obviously, for me to sell them on. So finances-wise, we're doing all right. You know, I've still got £414 in the transfer budget. I've got 100% of transfer revenue still being made available should any more sales happen. Wage budget-wise, I've still got that 83k, but I'm currently spending 79, so 4,000 pound under that. Transfer debt 600k, net debt absolutely nothing. An overall balance we're up to 1.5 million. So overall, financially, we're coming out this transfer window in quite a decent position again. Transfer-wise, then, first player leaving was Albert Ellis. We didn't even see him last season. He's a decent player, wide player, though, and obviously I'm playing with that narrow diamond. He was out on loan at Bordeaux last season where he played 31 times, scored eight goals, and we're selling him off for £6.5 million, and he's already gone. Pedro Malero, he has gone off to Lens. He was with us last season. Played six times, didn't really do a lot, and we sold him off for 110k, 350k with add-ons. And then there's a couple of transfers that I'm quite disappointed about. So Nathan has left us. He has gone off to Bochum for £1.5 million. We actually got him last season. He was on loan with us the season before, but we paid 950k for him. We've made a bit of money, you know, 450k profit. He made 30 appearances his last season, one goal, seven assists. For me, I would not want this guy to go. It was all kicking off. He wanted to leave. He was in his last year of his contract as well. Bizarrely, a lot of these players have only got two-year deals. And that also hurt me here with Yanis Hamachi. Now, again, he's probably my best player last season. As he got a 7.2 rate and over 25 appearances, one goal with five assists in there as well. And he went for 850k. This guy was easily a £3 million player. Now, he's still only valued at 950k, but look at him, his quality. All-rounded player, 23-year-old. Current ability, three and a half star, potential ability, four star. He was good for us. And another guy that was just kicking off, wanted a better deal, didn't want to be with us anymore. And even when like a ridiculous offer coming, it was like 700k, I want to leave for it. And when we were fighting over his transfer value, he thought he was valued up to 500k. But for me, I would have wanted more money, it just was not meant to happen. So Amachi has gone off to Lagane's. Transfer history-wise, and obviously we spoke about this just before the break when I put a £3 million deal in for Petter Musa and he has joined us. Not too much to say about this guy, apart from he's now valued up to about £6 million. But again, you know, top goal scorer last season, 29 goals in 32 appearances. More of the same this season, please, Petter. I brought in Christian Walton from Brighton for a free transfer. He was on loan last season. In League One, where he only played one time, which is quite disappointing. This guy's not a regular starter. Currently paying him £4,000 per week on wages. And he's valued up to about a half million pounds. Current ability three star. Potential ability three and a half star. I just needed a deputy. And they've done him dirty on that four. Let's be honest, looks half asleep. But yes, 26-year-old, still got plenty of time. But then coming in as my number one, Didier Desperez. So this guy, I've probably sorted out my number one now for the next three, four seasons. It may be to the end of the save if I'm completely honest, but he's currently valued at £3.7 million. Current ability three star, potential ability three and a half star. He's a sweeper keeper, 23 year old, and I bought him for £1.2 million. He was a Charleroi last season where he played 25 times, conceded 20 goals, eight clean sheets, two player to match performance, so 7.18. Decent goalkeeper. And like I say, I'm happy with him being here. And he comes in and is the undisputed number one at the minute. So next in then is the 30-year-old Cameroonian Jan Sanogo. Not a great player. Those attributes are those mental attributes. Incredible. Look at the amount of 20s there. But he can play midfield, defensive mid, or centre-back. Current ability two and a half star potential. Plenty of his full potential. I brought him in from Bradford City from League 2. Where he played 45 times last season. I brought him in for 165k and he's valued at half a million. Loving that. Another player that I brought in was a 23-year-old Spaniard, Gilem Jaime. What a name that is. Current ability three star, potential ability three and a half star. Got him on a free transfer from Barcelona B. He actually played 34 times in their reserves last season. Four goals, one assist. Happy to get him in. He was released on a free transfer. Decent player. Crossing and dribbling 11. Acceleration and pace ball 13. Likes to dive into a tackle. That is a problem. But he gets forward whenever possible. And that is what I'm after. Can play defensively left and right back. And a 23-year-old currently valued up to £2 million. One of the things we had to do in his rebuild was money ball. And I think we've got the opportunity here. And then lastly, I've bought in a 23-year-old Israeli. 
Oufri Arad. 14 caps for Israel already. And he looks like a solid centre back. Now that head and mark and tackling all 13, stone 13 as well. Current ability three and a half star, potential ability four star. On the shorter side at five foot ten, that does worry me a little bit. We're only paying him two thousand pounds per week wages though. He's joined us and he's injured straight away, but it's not the end of the world. He's only out for five days. And we bought him in for Maccabi Haifa for 850k. And like I said, I just see he was valued at 2.5 million pounds. So again, opportunity to money ball. Very well all rounded from a defensive perspective as well when we look at his attribute analysis. But quality player nonetheless. So looking at how these players fit into the squad, then obviously we're still going to play the 4-4-2 diamond. I think that's the way to go, but we're going to go with Desperes in goal. Jane Perozo, Arad and Cannon at the back with, with Vukatic in that Holden role. Makuta and Perez in the middle with Sawyer behind, Moraes and Musa up front. Moraes obviously was a player that got promoted from the development team and he's a quality player. Currently valued at £3.6 million. Pounds. What I will say as well, when we look at the development centre, we have had a quality youth intake. Now, João Braga, £7.8 million, pound, this guy's valued it already, 15-year-old Portuguese. Now, I don't usually bring in regens and new gens, and I'm probably not going to, but there may be an opportunity for me to sell on £3.7 million, and then put that money back into the squad. Martin Tavares, a player, let's just let's just move him to the senior squad, why not? My senior squad isn't very big anyway. And Ivo Misqueta, another defender there, let's get him to the senior squad. There we go, 19-year-old, one air cut. So, you've seen the squad. What about the squad dynamics? How's that looking? So, team cohesion's average, club atmosphere, very good. And so is the managerial support. Top influencers-wise, 17 player supporters, 5 players have no real opinion of us. And then when we look at the competitions for this season, so we've got the Portuguese Premier League, the Europa League, where you can see there, we enter at the group stage, which is good for us. None of this faffing about and potentially crashing out before we get to the group stages this season. The Tac de Portugal and the Alliance Cup, which we've actually made it into this time as well. I think we went out before the group stages last time. So... In the league, then, what is the expectation this season? A 7th place finish this time round, 150 to 1. We've got no players in the Media Dream 11. Can you imagine them? Absolute surprise at that happening. Porto, Benfica, Sporting, Braga, obviously the teams above us there. Familia Cao and Vittorio Guimarães, teams that could potentially be pipping us to that European spots again. But I think we'll do it. I genuinely do. We're probably not going to break into the top three, but I st certainly think, you know, if we can dislodge Braga again, we're in that top four place. I just cannot see any team really doing it before us. And then looking at the schedule-wise then, we start off with games against Rio Ave, Santa Clara, Estoril, Belenenses, Benfica, Braga, Marese, Academic. We don't actually take on Porto all the way down until the 23rd of October. Benfica obviously going to be our first chance of the season. I would imagine, you know, we might completely fall apart now as I've changed our team up quite a lot. But I am quietly confident. Europe, when we just have a look at the squad, as squad depth, there isn't too much there now. You know, I can just about name 12 substitutes that I want. So playing in all these different competitions may take its toll, especially if we get to the latter end of them, towards the back end of the season. So yes, what we're going to do then, guys, is we're going to move forward to the end of season two, where hopefully we're in Europe again. And you never know, we've caused a couple of upsets across the way. Right then guys, so season two is over. We've got a fifth place finish and I'm sure that means Europa Conference League football next season. 58 points on the board for us there. It's not a bad season. I don't know if I get carried away by thinking we should do a little bit better than that. But we finished four points clear of Santa Clara. What are they doing within the top six? Sporting now, seven points clear of us. And we're a country mile away from Benfica. End up winning the league. Braga though, a team that we pipped the fourth spot last time. End up finishing in second place. Porto have had a little bit of a shocker. Sporting even further away. Like I say, Sporting are currently 19 points behind Benfica. We ended up playing 34 games, 17 wins, 7 draws, 10 defeats, 66 goals scored, 60 conceded. Look at the state of that in comparison to those teams around us. Santa Clara only conceded 42. Yes, we scored a lot more than them, but 60 conceded. Plus six goal difference, 58 points on the board. Four towards the back end of the season doesn't look too bad as we won three of our last five games. And when we look at the past positions and how did we get on, so we had a shocking start to the season. Now we're up in top spot for one game before really falling off, down as low as 11th at one point before levelling out towards the back end of the season there. Competitions wise, oh, there's some. Oh, we have won one. There we go. Alan. The Alliance Cup. I thought they were two runners up then. So we've won that one. Who did we win against? 1 0 against Vittoria Gamarez there. And then we finished runner up in the Taca de Portugal. So there you go then. So 3 1, we were absolutely smashed by Porto when we have a look here. They had. We were actually the better side looking at that. 16 shots, 6 on target. They had 3 shots on target. 
and scored three goals. Not a great game for your goalkeeper when he gets a 6.2. Ricardo Mangas getting a 6 as well. So we were the better side and we got done in the cup final. In the Europa League, we were knocked out in the quarterfinal by Benfica and we were done there 4-1 at home as well, losing 5-1 on aggregate. And then we've seen our fifth place finish. So overall, I'd say it's a decent season. Two cup finals, winning one of them, losing one of them. Quarterfinal in the Europa League is a much more than I thought we were going to get. And then obviously we've got a Europa Conference League place next season. So finances-wise then this season, we've got a transfer budget of 2.2 million. Not great if I'm honest, 62% of transfer revenue is being made available, 62% is quite a random number as well. Wage budget wise though has took a hefty increase, 127k we can spend which is more or less 50k than what we're currently spending. 7.8 million in the overall balance, debt and loans nothing, transfer debt though is currently 1 million pounds. Squad dynamics then, how's it looking? Much, much better now. Green across the board with team cohesion and club atmosphere, very good. Maggio support is excellent. Players want more game time there and want better contracts. I'll probably look at it having to clear it out again. So Nogo wants to leave. Obviously, he hasn't been given the game time, so he opposes us. I've got 17 players to support us and two players that have no real opinion of us. Social groups wise though, still just a core and secondary social groups. And then when we look at the player stats, so top goal score this season was Petter Musa again with 27 goals. But only 13 in the league then we look at it. You know, we got 29 last season, 13 this season. Not as prolific this time round. High average rating was Sawyer with a 7.36. Most assists was Ricardo Mangas with 14. Best pass completion was Arad with 97%. Most player of the match awards was Saul with 7. Most yellow cards was Mangas with 16. And most red cards was Garcia, Cannon, Perez and James with 1 apiece. Wowzers, so 4 red cards there overall. When we look at these team stats wise then... So 66 goals scored, which was the third best. We scored plenty of goals, but 60 goals conceded was the second worst this season. Yellow cards wise then 83, which is the third worst. Red cards wise 4, which is the third worst. And average attendance just under 10,000, which is the sixth best. Now for me, tactically, obviously, what are we going to do is we are playing this diamond. And I'm not sure that's the way to go. Maybe we'll look at a 4-2-4 attacking. We can score plenty because I don't know whether to go like a 4-4-2 and just try and soak it up. Just go for an attacking like 4-4-2 because we can score the goals. And the teams around us aren't great. We just need to be breaking into that top three now. I'm basically going into the halfway point of this save. Yes, we've got a bit of silverware, but it wasn't the tacker I was after. It was the Portuguese Premier League crown and we don't seem to be getting anywhere near it. Those two, three teams above us are really starting to pull away. So yeah... I've got a big decision to make in the summer. What do we do tactically? And can I bring players in to fit that tactic should I want to make the change? Right, so here we go then, the start of season three and a half, and we come back a little bit later. As I'm expecting a takeover, I just keep going on and on, and nothing's happening, so by this rate, the takeover's probably not going to happen until Christmas, so I've just had to call time on it, and we'll start talking about what's being done between the transfer window. So I had a little bit of an epiphany, and I thought, Wolves, they're doing quite well in the Premier League. They've got lots of Portuguese players. Why don't I have a team full of Portuguese players, seeing as though... We're a Portuguese team and I've lost that over the last couple of seasons. I've let some of the players go. So why not bring some Portuguese players back into the squad, which is what I've done. So when we look at the finances, first of all, I've still got £1.8 million in the transfer budget. Wage budget's now been bumped up to 153000 I'm currently spending 148000 Overall balance, £18 million, looking strong. And debt and loan, I've got no net debt, but I've got £2.1 million transfer debt. Now, a player that left us in the January transfer window, nothing to do with this, Miguel Rashino. He has gone to Hoffenheim for 3.2 million. They played him seven times last season, two assists. That must have happened in the January transfer window. It's like I say, nothing to do with that, but he's now out for five weeks to three months with damaged cruciate ligaments, unfortunate for him. But yeah, we got a little bit of money there. I'm not too happy about it. He was a decent player for us in the midfield. Like I say, last season, before we let him go, he played 13 times, five goals, five assists. So he was solid for us. But then I made a big decision to let Reggie Cannon go. Now, this guy was comfortably the top earner at the club, getting almost £20,000. And I've let him go to Sparta Moscow for £7.75 million. Now, we spent £2.5 million on him. He's been a regular starter for us. 25 assists last season, 6 assists, 2 player to match performances, a 7.2. And like I say, solid, but I just needed that 20 k off the wages. Then Yang Tsongo, a player that I brought in last season, I brought him in from like League 2, where he's at Bradford City. He played 9 times since last season, I spent 165 k on him. And we sold him too. Pacosta Ferreira, who have literally just been promoted to the Premier League this season for 250k. 
Then Sebastian Perez left. He went to Payok in Greece. Now, he went away for 4.9 million. We spent 1.1 million pound. He played 29 games last season, six goals for us. A solid player in the midfield, but he's cracking on now 30 year old. So, to get almost 5 million pound for him is a very good deal indeed. Then another player I brought in last season, Gwilym James. Now, he went off to Famali Cow for £2.2 .2 million. Now, last season, he played 30 times for us. We got him on a free transfer. And when we're speaking about Moneyball and £2.2 .2 million for a free transfer the season before, good business for us. Another player that joined us last season, Offrey Rad, has gone off to... Portimonese for 1.5 million. Again, we've made basically almost 600k on this guy who played 22 times for his last season. Decent player, got international pedigree, 18 caps for Israel, 24 year old. But I've brought better options into my central defence anyway, so he's gone. So in the last transfer window, you remember me talking about this goalkeeper that I brought in. He's going to be the next best thing and he'll be with us for the next three, four seasons. Well, I've let him go. Didier Desperez has gone off to Zult again for £1.3 million. Pounds. Now, we bought him for one point two. He played 33 times his last season, 58 conceded. He's played four times already in five conceded in the Belgian Premier League. He did come in with an offer. I didn't really want to sell him, but it was a bit of money when I needed it, so I took it. Another player to leave then was Gers Matuka. Now, I did not want to sell this guy at all, but he did not want to extend his contract with us. It expired at the end of this coming season. And he was valued up to like £6 million. We've managed to sell him on for Alain in the UAE for £5 million. We bought him for 250k. He'd done some good stuff for us last season. 28 games, 8 goals, 3 assists, 3 player to match performances. He's been solid for us. And he did not want to leave. But he should have just signed a contract. It was that simple. Current ability there, you can see 3.5 stand. He was playing to that. Solid player, but he just, he just wouldn't sign a contract. That's the end of it. And then another player that didn't want to sign a contract and was absolute upheaval was Gustavo Sauer. Probably one of the best players at the club, if not the best player at the club. And he did not want to sign a contract. Now, it's my own fault. I took my eye off the ball and Gremio come in, took him away and that's it. He played 34 times last season, getting 12 goals from behind the striker. We're going to miss him, we really are. But that's my fault, you know. At the end of the day, I didn't look at the contract expiries quickly enough and I've paid the price for that this time. So coming in then, plenty of players joining us. The first player through the door was Victor Schust, 23-year-old Spaniard, plays as a centre-back, head and mark and tackling all decent. That tackling at 12, not as good as I'd want. He's six foot with 16 strength, current ability, two and a half star, potential ability, four star. And we got him on a free transfer from Castilla, Real Madrid's B team, when he played 35 times last season with one goal. Next through the door then was Rivaldo Coetzi, a 26-year-old South African with 42 caps. He's got a continental reputation and he can play right through the span of the team from centre-back to central midfielder. His passing of 18 is really what drew me to him. He's currently valued at 6.2 million and he's almost playing to his full potential. When we have a look at his previous performance, he was at Sundowns where he got 20 appearances, one goal, three assists. And we've brought him in on a free transfer. And like I say, valued at 6.2 million, we might moneyball him next season if he doesn't perform. I then brought in Frank Sajut, another on a free transfer, and he's valued at 9.6 million. We got him from Milan, where last season he actually played 19 times in Serie A with six goals. Don't know how he managed to get this guy in a free. He's a striker, but he can play out on the right-hand side as well. Acceleration and pace, both decent at 13 and 15. Finishing 13, composure 13. Not great at crossing, if I'm going to try and play him out on those wide areas, but he's already played one game for us. In the Europa Conference League playoffs, and he scored two goals in that game. Perfect 10 rating there as well, as you can see. So, a good start. Then I started the influx of Portuguese players. So, I've brought in 24-year-old Nuno Moreira, who can play right behind the striker, left, right, and central. Currently valued 750k, four-star ability. And we brought him in from Vizela for 230k. They've just been relegated, I think. I think they're back down in the second tier now, which they are. So, it was a good price offer for him. Almost four-star already and valued at 750k. And then I spent 1.2 million on another Portuguese player, 24 year old Felipe Suarez, who plays the central midfielder, but I am probably going to play him behind the striker. Decent all round player, technique and vision, both 16, I pass and 14 as well. Takes the number 7 shirt and could hopefully unlock the door. He's currently valued £3.7 million. And like I say, 1.2 million I spent on him from Morenze after he played 29 times with two goals and three assists last season. Then I might just sneak a player out of Porto, Sir so Mario Barra has joined us, 23 year old. Portuguese again, 13 caps at under-21 level, basically a central midfielder. He can play in those other areas, but that's not where I want him. He's got an evasive media handle, I like that. He ducks the media, and he's currently valued 4.4 million. He's also currently playing to his full potential, which is four-star, and I spent £2.4 million on him, where he only played one game for Porto last season, and he was transfer-listed, and that's why I have took a chance on him. 
Then we went off to Italy and got David Carmo from Juventus. Now, he's capped at under-20 level for Portugal. He's now 24-year-old. A ball-playing centre-back as well, which is just what we're after. So, heading, Mark and tackling, all decent. He's at tackling now, 12 again, but strength, 17. He marks the opponent tightly and he likes to stay back. I want someone to play a bit deeper. He's currently valued at £9 million and he's got four-star potential. Juventus brought him last season for £1.7 million from Braga and we took him on for £1.5 million. But he did actually play one game at the centre of Juventus' defence in the Serie A last season. So then I want to strengthen out on the right-hand side, and I've brought in Costina, 23-year-old Portuguese, under-21 international again. So these guys have got some under-21 caps for Portugal, which is good, a little bit of international pedigree, not too much, but enough. Now playing out at right-back, my expectation is he's going to bomb forward, so acceleration and pace, 15 apiece. Crossing and dribbling, 13 and 12. That is literally all I'm after. Not too much in that. You know, the defensive attributes would be fantastic. He can't head a ball, but he can mark and tackle. Tackling 13 here. We brought him in for £1.8 million from Rio Avery. He played 31 times last season with four assists. He's played twice for us already. Then obviously I needed to strengthen in goal, so I've brought in Dominic Grief, 26-year-old Slovakian with four caps. At six foot six, this guy's an absolute giant and a very good player for us. He's currently valued 300 k Current ability is three star, potential ability three and a half star. And I brought him in for 145k. Good deal for us, that considering that we sold our goalkeeper for 1.3 million pounds. Then I wanted to strengthen out on the left back side, so I brought in Rafa Suarez, a 28 year old Portuguese, under 21 international. Obviously, he's well past that now, a 28 year old. He's a fringe player and he's probably not going to start too many games, but he's playing to his full potential, which is three star. History wise, we bought him in for 550k after he played four times for Sporting last season. They took him on last season and they've just about managed to recoup all of their money. Another player through the door then was 29-year-old Fails. What a name that is. Left and right back, predominantly a right back. Current ability, four and a half star. Valued £5 million and I brought him in for 200k. I brought him in from Tondela, who spent 63k on him last season. He played 30 times, three goals, two assists. Solid player who will add depth to that position. And then finally, I spent £2.7 million on Zaras. Now, this guy, realistically, I want him to play behind a striker. That long shots of 17 and flair of 16 is really what sold him on us. And I brought him in from Maritima, where he played 28 times, 3 goals, 5 assists. I'm expecting 10 goals off this guy this season. And I'm hoping he's going to be the direct replacement for Kazhave Sawyer. I really am, because I've dropped the bollock there, and this guy, hopefully, is going to get me out of trouble. So tactically then, this looks like how we're going to set up with Grief in goal, Suarez, Carmo, Coetzee and Fels at the back with Barrow and Suarez in the middle, Marias, Zadas and Zadut. God, that's a mouthful with Musa up front. We're going to play a 4-2-3-1 now, you know, we're going to move on from the diamond, the diamond's got us so far, but we're going to play an attacker mentality as well. Squad dynamics wise and team cohesion's average, club atmosphere is very good and my geo support's excellent. Top influencers wise then, I've got 19 players to support us and one player has no real opinion of us. That surprises me with the amount of turnover that we've had because when we have a look at these transfers and transfer history, I might to sell players for 23.5 million, I only spent 11.75 million bringing it back in. That's a massive squad turnover as you can see there, many players in, many players out. But I suppose it's all down to the social groups. So I've got players that are in no social group. I've got a couple of players that are in a secondary social group. But we'll work on that. Obviously, the more games they play together, the more chance they've got to fall into that core social group. Competitions-wise this season, then, obviously, we've got the Portuguese Premier League, the UEFA Conference League, the Tacker to Portugal and the Lions Cup. And the expectation is to really push on, especially in Europe now. As let's have a look at the season preview, then. We're expected a sixth-place finish this time round. No players in the Media Dream eleven. Which isn't ideal, but again, I didn't expect to see anybody. Now we're fifty to one now to win the league, with Porto still the favourites at thirteen to eight. And then finally, looking at the schedule, we've already played some games. We've had a two-two draw with Braga and a two-nil victory over Maritima. We're three to up in that conference playoff place against Michelin. We've got Benfica up next. It's been a decent start, but what I will say is when we look at the league. Porto have had an absolute shocker, played two games, lost one, drawn one, and find themselves in 16th place, so a special shout out to them. So yes, we've had a decent start, the takeover hasn't happened, if anything has happened, I will update at the end of next season. Now then guys, season 3 is over, and as you can see, first of all, we have won the league, but the teams that I was expecting to challenge us have fallen away straight away, Porto currently 12 points behind us, and Porto have had quite a shocking season in fairness, Benfica, you know, they've given us a good run for their money, we've got no right winning this league, and as you can see, let's have a look in all its glory, 34 games played, 26 wins, 3 draws, 5 defeats all season, who were those losses to? So I lost to Belenenses, 3-2, Three 0 at Porto actually, so I'm saying Porto are falling away, but they've beat us home and away, and Benfica beat us home and away. We got, we got smashed five 0 by Benfica away from home, so 
it's not ideal there. We've got 81 points on the board. Our form towards the end of the season was shocking, actually. Losing three of our last five games. We did score 94 goals there. What I will say, this tactic, the 4 2 3 1, is quite OP. You know, I've used it in other saves, and I'm all about the two up top. And for whatever reason, in this FM22 cycle, the one up top really does the damage. So we scored 94 goals, 36 goals conceded. That's where we need to look at improving at the back. 58 goal difference, 81 points on the board. Benfica in second place, Sport in another Champions League place. And Porto will be playing Europa League football next season. Looking at the past positions, and we've basically been in the top two the majority of the season. So from match day nine, we won 3-1 against Club Desportivo Forense. And yeah, we've been up there ever since. You know, we've been... Mincing about in top spot. Last game of the season, we won 2-0 against Academica, and that wrapped up the title anyway. Benfica, for instance, they've been in the top two themselves. Got a feel for Benfica, actually, as they've more or less been in the top spot for the majority of the season between us, and we were just a stronger team towards the back end of the season. Competitions-wise, there's plenty of trophies here as we've won the Europa Conference League as well. A 5-3 victory against Spartak Moscow in the final. We had 16 shots, 8 on target, scored 5 goals. Tavares with 2, Zadez was a player that I brought in right towards the back end of the transfer window, 26-year-old. He managed to score 14 goals across 45 games, 22 assists. So money well spent there, 2.7 million, that's a lot of money on a player for us. And we've certainly reaped the reward of having him there. Got a feel for Gustavo Sauer though, who left us, obviously didn't want to extend his contract with us. And we've gone on to win the Premier League and the Conference League in the first season after he left. Attack of the Portugal, we ended up finishing runner up there. Let's have a look at that one as we've beaten 2-1 an extra time by Sporting. They scored in 120 plus one as well. So literally all of the allotted time has gone. We'll get to see it. You know, the way I look at some stuff like this is you win some, you lose some. We've been on the receiving end of some of these late goals. And this time around, that is a scream. A keeper though flinches as the ball goes past him and we end up losing 2-1. And then in the Lions Cup, we're beaten in the semi-final. So let's have a look at that semi-final wise. We're beaten 3-2 by Benfica. Were we absolutely battered in this one as well? Yeah, absolutely. They had 25 shots, 15 on target. We had 7 and 6. We've done well to still be in that, if I'm completely honest. So decent on the old trophy cabinet front then. We've got 5.8 million in transfer budget. The thing is now, if we can get the Champions League over the next couple of seasons, the money is going to start flooding in. You can see my overall balance there is £16 million. Debt and loans have got 1.7 million transfer debt. But what I'm saying is the generated revenue and income from the Champions League now will just, we will snowball and I'll have money to play with next season. I would expect at least a 25 million transfer budget going into the final season. But I've got 178k on the wage budget. I'm currently spending 157. So I've basically got 21k to play with there as well. But now with the wages that they are, that's only a couple of players. So it's nothing to write home about. Squad dynamics wise then, as expected, you know, team cohesion and managerial support is very good. Club atmosphere is excellent. Got a couple of players that want to leave. Thiago Moraes, one of our prodigies, wants a better contract. He's had a decent season, scored and scoring 18 goals across all competitions. 8 in the league, 10 assists, a 7.23 rate. And what's he valued at now? 14.5 million. The player stats, Peter Musa scored 60 goals this season. 60 goals in 39 starts. He scored 17 in 10 in the Europa Conference League. 35 in 22 starts in the Portuguese Premier League. So there you go, 35 goals this season. This guy, when we look at it, he has got to be the top scorer. 100%, you know, I bet me house on it now. Let's have a look. Oh, and I'll be right to bet me house on him as well. as Frank Sajewitz got second place as well with 21 goals. So between them, we've got a combined tally of 56 goals between me two front men. Peter Mustard have 35 goals. What a season for him. What's he valued at now? He's only valued 15.5 million. If I was another team in Europe, I'd be snapping this guy up. He's basically going to have a clean sweep with that then. So highest average rating was Musa with a 7.83. He's also got the most player of the match awarded at 13, which you'd expect with that kind of performance. Most assists was Moreira with 24. Best pass completion was a Weziem with 97%. Most yellow cards was Carmo with 18. And most red cards are Weziem, Chust, Rivaldo Curtsy and Suarez with one apiece. And then when we look at the team stats, the team stats wise... 94 goals scored, which is the best. Goals conceded, 36, which is the fifth best. But when you are getting smashed 5-0 by Benfica, you're not going to be having the least conceded goals. Yellow cards-wise, 83, which is the worst. Red cards, 2, which is the sixth worst. And average attendance, just under 13,000, which is the sixth best. So what a season, guys. You know, we'll just go back to those competitions to see the cup performance. We could have basically had a treble this season if we'd won in that Taka de Portugal final. But it is what it is, you know, 121st minute goal doing us there. So, yes, what we're going to do is we're now going to start to build for the Champions League. The revenue should outweigh any spend over this season. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend all of the money in its entirety. I'm going to moneyball some players off. When we look at the squad, I think finally have a look at the values of players now. As you can see there, 
So Hewitt is now worth up to £28 million and we got him on a free transfer. So there's an opportunity as well for me to bring some money back in. Financially, did I mention, we're still at 62% of available transfer revenue being made available. So I've got some big decisions to make, but it's going to be exciting nonetheless. So join me at the start of Season 4, where it's all about the Champions League now we've dominated the league. Right then guys, so into season four we go and after winning the league last season I did say that we were going to have some fun and do some good bits in the Champions League this season so that is the plan. Now, got a game coming up against Sporting in the Super Tacker, our first opportunity to win that bit of silverware. So before I talk about anything else, we're on the day, let's just simulate forward one day and see what happens. It's like I say, an opportunity to get our hands on another bit of silverware right at the start of the season. You know, what a way to start the season that would be. And we end up losing 3-2, as you can see there. That's disappointing. As we concede three goals in the first half before Petter Musa with a penalty on 40 and on 82. That's really poor from us there. Eight shots, six on target. So first chance of silverware has gone and that may be a bit of an indicator to how we're going to do this season. I hope that's not the case. But getting into the business that we've done this season then, transfer budget-wise, I've still got £1.8 million left. Wage budget-wise, I'm now over a quarter of a million pounds, spending 257 k Debt and loans-wise, just £7 million debt, no net debt. And then summary-wise, in the overall balance, we've now got £24 million. And that'll continue to grow with the revenue being created by the Champions League this season. With us winning the league, we get into the group stages. So regardless, we're going to have six Champions League games. Even if we lose all of them, we're still getting the revenue from that anyway. So transfers wise then players leaving. So the first player out the door was Jackson Porozo. He has gone off to Mallorca for £1.7 million. Pounds. Now he was a regular starter with us when I took over, playing 26 times in both of the first two seasons before only playing 13 the season after. Naturally we brought in better players and he was starting to fall out of favour. So to reclaim £1.7 million pounds for a player that's decent, don't get me wrong, head marking and tackling off 13 apiece, that's strength 14. He's got decent pace at 16 as well, you know his physicals are good. But for 1.6 million, let's just get him off the books. The biggest transfer out then was Victor Schust. He has gone off to Zenit St. Petersburg. A guy that we got on free transfer has gone for 14.75 million. Now, he did play 30 times this last season, 7.2 rating as well. So, you know, he had a decent season for us. That head and mark and tackling, all good. Strength 16. He was a good player when we brought him in. But when you've got him on a free transfer, and you almost get 15 million back the season after. And it's easy money for us as well, for you can regenerate into buying other players. Now, another player out the door was a player that I didn't really want to sell, Costina. Now, we bought him in last season for a total of 1.8 million, and we sold him for 3.8 million, and that's given him away. He was easily a 10 million pound player. But I've had a bit of a revolt in regards to contracts. So, yes, we've won the league and we've got Champions League football this season, but this guy was on four grand, I think, and he wanted 40 grand when he asked for an increase in his contract. It just was not happening. And when I rejected that, players took his side and had a bit of a revolt where everybody was coming to me with, with contract increases and Costina just happened to be the guy that I had to let go to stop that happening. So yes, he has gone to Parma for a cup price. Like I say, should easily have got £10 million for him. So players coming in, then the first player through the door is Joachim Konopla. Now he is a 24-year-old Ukrainian, 17 caps, can play as a left and right back, predominantly as a right back for us, that's where Costina was, so I've got a direct replacement there. And acceleration pace, he is lightning at 17 apiece with 16 stamina and 50 natural fitness. Hopefully he'll be able to run all day for us. Now with that pace and acceleration, I like to have the mix of crossing and dribbling, which isn't great at 9 apiece. However, marking and tackling 12, so he can do his defensive duties. He's currently valued up to 16.5 5 million and I got him on a free transfer from Shakhtar Donetsk where he played 12 times in the Ukrainian Premier League last season. Then we went off to Italy and brought in Matteo Lovato, 24-year-old Italian, who is just a centre-back, doesn't really play anywhere else. Head and mark in 15, tackling 14, strength 15. Probably one of the strongest defenders at the club now. Currently valued three star, potential ability four star, valued to £10 million, and we got him for 825k. He only played two times last season for Atalanta, obviously a fringe player, but we've brought him in and he's a very good centre-back option for us. Staying in Italy then, the biggest transfer of the summer for us was Giertano, Oristanio, who I brought in from Inter Milan for 5.5 million. Now, we only played two times in Sarria last season, but it's this season here for Volonendam, where he played 38 times, 18 goals, 12 assists, one player to match performance. Solid. Now, he can play up front, but I want to play him behind the striker. Those long shots, 15, passing 14, technique 16, vision 14, even the agility and whatnot. He's got the attributes in the right places. Now, he's currently valued 5.4 million, so we haven't seen a massive spike in his transfer value. His current ability is 2.5 star, potential ability 5 star, but this guy, give him a good season, 15 million pound player all day long. 
And then I done a little bit of a raid in Barcelona's B team. So the first player joining us is Santi Ramos Mingo, 22 year old Argentinian with three under 20 caps, can play as a centre back, also as a left back, but he is going to play as a centre back. Attributes wise, the key ones for me head and mark and tackling, all decent, strength 13, pace and acceleration good as well at 14 and 15. Currently valued at 10.5 million, almost playing to his full potential, and we brought him in for 875k legacy from Barcelona's B side. And then a guy that was labelled as a wonder kid amongst the Barcelona youth teams, Nico, 22 year old with 20 under 21 caps, so he's just dropped out of that side. Current ability 3 star, potential ability 4 star, currently valued at 4.4 million, could play more as a defensive anchor, but I'm going to play him in the midfield with that first touch 15, pass and 13, tackling, technique and vision ball 14 as well. History wise, then, like I say, brought him in from Barcelona B, where he played 38 times last season with 5 goals and 9 assists, 5 player to match performances as well, and he cost us 2.2 million, which I think is a bargain. Tactically then, we're still going to line up the same way with a 4-2-3-1. Obviously, this, this is the title-winning tactic with Griefing goal, Suarez, Carmo, Lovato and Canopla at the back with Barrow and Suarez in the middle, Marrera, Zadas and Tadzuit out wide with Moose up front. What a team that is. And there's players on the bench there. Oristano, Mingus, Marais, Mangus, Fails as well. Obviously, the club captain. There's lots of players that can drop in. The squad depth is quality. Obviously, we're fighting on all fronts now. And when we're talking about fighting on all fronts, you can see that obviously we're just a runner up in the Super Tackers. We've just blown that first opportunity against Sporting, but we've still got the Alliance Cup, the Tack of the Portugal, the away for Champions League, like I said, Bove Easter entering the group stage, and then the League of Portugal as well. So let's have a look at how we're going to fare there or the expectation. Is a fifth place finish 16 to 1. Porto still expected to win the league. They haven't really been anywhere near the last couple of seasons. And we've got no players in that major dream 11, which doesn't surprise us. What was the big transfer deal? of the summer. So Matias Nunes going from Sporting to Arsenal for 56 million. They also took on Francisco Cancercaura as well for 42 million pounds. Wowzers. So no mega deals as far as the incomings go, but lots of quality players leaving the Portuguese Premier League, which is great for us, but potentially not for the league in itself. So looking at the schedule wise, then we start off with games against Vitoria, Setubal, Rio Ave, Estoril, Melanesez and Santa Clara, all winnable games. I'm expecting 15 points from a possible 15 here, you know, five wins, nothing less. As then we have the likes of Braga, Porto and Benfica, three games. So that's within the first eight games, you take those three on. So we've got to get those 15 points on the board early doors. So yes, that is it then, guys. Loads of work done in the summer. Took it on to the next level. Obviously, we've brought some money back in from those free transfers that we had the season before. So let's get in to our first season in the Champions League. Can we get out the group stage? You know, that had been an incredible achievement on its own. Right, guys. So we didn't win the league then with a the third place finish, as we can see there. We finished 11 points behind Porto. And I'm sure at some point, maybe in just before the break, I'd said that Porto hadn't done too much. And I didn't understand that. Why they were being made league favourites. And as you can see there, obviously they've ended up running away. I say run away with it. They finished two points clear of Benfica. But they ran away from us with the title anyway. So we played 34 games, 23 wins, 5 draws, 6 defeats. 83 goals scored, which looks like it's the highest again. We conceded 31 though, which looks like it's a third worst. So not too bad this season. 52 goal difference, 74 points on the board. We were six points clear of Porting in fourth. I think we've now broken into the top three and that is our place. Regardless, yes, we didn't win the league and that is disappointing. But we're a top three side. We should be getting Champions League football every season. Look at the past positions then. Yeah, you can see that we didn't have the greatest start of the season. Down as low as seventh. We were actually beaten 1-0 by Belen. It says that's not ideal. But then we get ourselves up into third place on match day 21 and we stayed. I'm assuming Porto were top for the majority of the season. Benfica bottling it on and off there as they lost on the second to last game of the season. They're actually beaten by Porto 2 1, putting Porto top and for them to win the league. Competitions wise, then obviously we had that third place finish in the league. In the Champions League, we were knocked out by Liverpool. Why did we get Liverpool? Why did we get our support? There's no teams there really. By Leverkusen, may have fancied me chances against Benfica, I reckon would have done us. So yeah, we were smashed. 6-1 on aggregate by Liverpool, and we went out. But we did get out the group stages, so that's not a bad effort in the first place. You know, I'm just disappointed we went up against Liverpool in the knockouts. In attack of the Portugal, we were beaten. Where did we go out? There is the final hasn't been played yet. Semi-final, did we get that far? We didn't even get that far. Sixth round, we went out on penalties to Benfica there. 
We did actually win the Alliance Cup though, so we won 1-0 against Porto. Let's have a look at that. Samares with a penalty on 17 minutes gets us the win. We only had one shot on target as well, so we managed to like FM our way through that one. And we were obviously beaten in the Super Attacker final by Sporting. So, you know, not a bad season. We didn't win the league, but again, I reckon last season was lucky. I think we were well ahead of the schedule then to be winning the league within season three. But when we look at the finances, what have I got? To, oh, £25 million. I've got £25 million to play with this coming season. Wage budget wise, I've got 332 k to spend, and I'm currently spending 260 61. So we've got the best part of 70 grand to play with. Overall balance now 42 million pound. But I said Champions League football will do this to you. It really will. Champions League football and the revenue that it brings, especially getting from the group stages to the knockouts. You know, serious money there. Debt and loan wise, no debt. Five million pound transfer debt though. I'm not sure how that's occurring, considering the amount of money from transfers I'm pulling back into the club. Squad dynamics wise and team cohesion is excellent, club atmosphere is good and Maggio support is very good. Plenty of players that want new deals, that is fair. Now, you know, with that kind of gap in the wage budget, I think I'll be able to sort everyone's contracts out. And then when we look at the hierarchy and the squad dynamics, we've got 14 players to support us, 7 players have no real opinion of us and nobody opposes us. So then looking at the player stats then, Petr Moussa got 38 goals this season. That's a quiet one in comparison to his 60-odd last season. But he did score 28 goals in 27 starts. Again, I want to see how this guy got on in comparison to everybody else in the league. He's got to be the top goal scorer, surely. Petr Moussa, for the third season, I think, on the bounce, or basically every season that he's been involved, he has been the top goal scorer. 28 goals this season. And he stayed from Braga, got 17. Any good? 22. Well, let's get him scouted, but he's currently valued at £20 million. Pounds. Maybe not go for that but overall another solid season for Musa. high standard rating wise then was Musa with a 7.86 Zedas got the most assists with 15 best pass completion Lovato with 98% most player of the match of Musa. obviously if you're getting that amount of goals you're getting loads of player of the match performances and he got 12 most yellow cards wise was Carmo with 17 yellow cards and most red cards Mangas got two red cards this season but let's have a look at the team stats wise then so we scored 83 goals which is the best 31 conceded which is the third best yellow cards wise 69 which is the first worst and one red card which is the ninth worst just under 14,000 average attendance again which is the sixth best so that is it I've got some money to spend finally you know we're, we're going to be in a fantastic financial position now anyway I don't want to get carried away I can still sell players on for a massive profit but we're going to push on for season five where I would like to win the league again that has got to be a dream hasn't it Champions League yes let's get some revenue let's see what we can do with that but let's have one more push at winning this league Right then guys, so this is it, the final season, season 5, and this one seems to have flown by for me, especially like I say, the challenge was always to win the Portuguese Premier League, we've done that, we've got one more season to maybe do it again, can we do it two times in five years instead of the one, we're doing alright with silverware across the board, I would like to do a little bit better in Europe this time round, you know, it's highly unlikely that we're going to win the Champions League in the fifth season, strange things have happened, but you no know, chance really, but there's an opportunity, you know, if you drop out of the Champions League into the Europa League, I think we can give it a go but I have gone out and I have strengthened I've spent some money I've still got 6.6 .6 million left in the transfer budget we're still only getting 62% of that transfer revenue wage budget is almost half a million pounds now that is some rise since we first took over we're currently spending 476k Overall balance is 41 million, debt and loan wise, 5 million transfer debt. So we're in a solid place. If you just got rid of our transfer budget there, we could wipe off that transfer debt straight away. So not too worried about that. Transfers wise, players leave and then Rafa Suarez, he has gone off to Verona for 6.25 million after we bought him for just over half a million pounds. He played 25 times just in the first season, getting 12 assists. Last season, he only played eight times. He wanted his contract increasing and at 30 year old, he just stuck out like a sore thumb. I think he was only on like six grand a week for us and Verona have offered him nearly 20 grand. So it was easy for us to move him on. Fels has gone off to Monza, 1.9 million, very happy with that, we bought him for 200k, he was a club captain at one point, 18 appearances last season, so he has played games for us, but at 31 year old, getting some cash in, I'm making a tidy profit as well. And we carry on bringing the profit in as Coetzee goes off to Levante in Spain. Got him in on a free transfer. He's played 43 games overall across two seasons. £6 million offer. Good player about to hit his prime, but again, you know, we can cash in. And then another player that's gone, the six foot six Slovakian Dominic Grief. He has gone off to Brighton in the Premier League. He played 34 times this last season, 31 goals conceded, 13 clean sheets. So he's been solid for us. He's never let us down. But again, the offer come in, and I'd already brought a replacement anyway, so Grief was transfer listed. We managed to pull some money back for him. 
So the first person through the door then is a 28-year-old Nigerian, Oleena. Now he can play basically on both sides of the pitch. Realistically left and right is where I want him as a wing back. I don't want him any higher than that. He's currently valued 2.7 million. He's a three star player. Acceleration and pace is rapid as well. Crossing and dribbling 12 and 11 as well as his defensive due is. Marking 10, tackling 12 is okay. He's got plenty of experience. We brought him in for 1.5 million after Lille took him for 1.2. He played 15 games in League 1 last season and he's a solid player for us. He isn't going to start every game but he's a very good squad depth option. So sorting out my goalkeeping options then was Marco Canaseki, 25-year-old Italian who's six foot three, currently valued at 8.8 .8 million. He's coming as a backup. He's not backup, as you can see there. He's taking the number one shirt. Current ability three and a half star, potential ability five star, solid player. Six foot three, like I say, and we brought him in for 2.4 million. He played 15 times for Atalanta last season, conceding 19 goals, but undisputed number one. I've only got Chris Walton left at the club as the backup option. I then brought in Ruben Polido, 24-year-old Spaniard with very good defensive technicals at heading 15, marking 15 and tackling 18. Decent pace and acceleration as well, 14 apiece. Can play at centre-back, which is where I want him, but also out on the right-hand side. Current ability 2.5 star, potential ability 3.5 star. Currently valued 5.4 million and I brought him in for £4 million pound from Huesca. Actually played 27 times from last season after joining them for £3.3 .3 million. I'm happy with this player. He's probably going to be a starter as well. And he's an upgrade on Koetsi. And then finally, I've brought in a Turkish international with 11 caps. He's 25-year-old Halil Doviskolu. What a player this guy is. First to 17, flair 17. Adds a bit of X-factor to the team. He's currently valued at £12 million. Potential ability three and a half star. He's almost playing there as it is. History-wise, we brought him in from Brentford for £12 million. And he's played once in the Champions League already in the qualifying stages and scored two goals. So a solid start for him. He was playing in the Championship last season where he played 31 times, eight goals, two assists. But like I say, he should be adding something different for us. I'm excited about this guy being with us. So overall, enough managed to bring in a total of 19.25 million. While spending £20 million, pounds, we've just about broken even this season. And then tactically, we're still going to stick with that 4-2-3-1 with Kanaseki in goal, Mangus, Camo, Polido and Carl Lopper at the back with Barrow and Suarez in the middle. Marias, Halil and Sadzuit out wide with Musa up front. Now Marias, what a player this guy's been for us. Obviously, he's been here since day dot. Current ability 4-star, potential ability 5-star and had a £45 million offer from Sheffield United coming. Rejected it. I want to keep this guy with us until I leave. He has been solid for us. As it stands, he's played 99 times for us, scored 22, assisted with 21 and that's just in the league. He's already scored two goals for us this season in the Champions League. Very, very good player. Not letting him go. He's one of our own and I reckon he's a definite full Portugal international in the future. Squad dynamics wise, I mean, Team Gijsen is very good, club atmosphere is very good and Maggio support is good. I've still got players that want better deals, that's not happening this season. I've got one player that opposes us and that's Suarez and that's just solely because he wanted 40k per week and I'm not, I'm not prepared to offer that. But overall the rest of it looks decent. Social groups wise I've got Kaneseki who isn't in any group but he has literally just joined us. The rest of them I'm sure with game time will fall into one core social group. Competitions wise, then obviously we've got the Portuguese Premier League, the UEFA Champions League, where we take on Olympiacos next in the playoff first leg. Tack to Portugal and the Alliance Cup as well. We don't get that chance in the Super Tacker, unfortunately, due to our performance last season. But I'm expecting big things from this season. So having a look at the season preview, realistically, we're expecting a fifth place finish. Why are we not moving further to the table? Santa Clara expected a third place finish. Special shout out to them. They have obviously done bits over the transfer window. Obviously no players in the Media Dream 11. And the biggest transfer then was João Palina going to Arsenal. Very good player. The quality of these players that are at the other teams. He's left Sporting for 45 million. Marsh Kumbulla has gone to Wolfsburg. He left Port for 29 million. So we're nowhere near that. And then schedule wise then we start off with games against Estoril, Academica, Lexes. Portimonense and Familia Cal. That's a decent start for us again. You know, we need to be picking up 15 points from a possible 15. Say it every season. Doesn't always happen. But yes, final season then, guys. Last opportunity for us to do more in Europe and to try and get another Premier League crown. Right, well, obviously the aim was to win the league again. If you've hung around to the end of the episode, we blew it. We blew it. We finished 10 points behind Porto, who looked like they were absolutely dominant in this one. They only lost two games all season, dropped points in three games out of 34 possible games. You know, how'd you catch that in the grand scheme of things? So, yes, 
We finished 10 points behind Porto. 27 wins, 3 draws, 4 losses, 97 goal scores, which looks like at the highest. Only 29 goals conceded this season, plus 68 goal difference. We finished 15 points clear of Benfica, but like I say, 10 points behind Porto. Not great. When we look at these past positions then, looking at it, we've been in second place for the majority of the season. Since match day 15, when we beat Estoril 4-1, Benfica have sat in third and Porto have been in top spot since the first game of the season basically so not ideal hopefully we've had better luck in the other competitions and we haven't we've had an absolute shocker it looks like we've peaked obviously in the middle here season number three and then we've never been the same since the so Champions League while we've been pushing for that you can see there we were in a very difficult group in the Champions League with Barcelona, Chelsea and Anderlecht. We ended up finishing in third place and going into the Europa League where we were knocked out in the second round by Napoli 5-3 on aggregate there, so we went crashing out of that one. We were then knocked out in the sixth round by Braga in extra time. 5-4, that is unfortunate. And then we were done in the semi-final by Porto, and we were well and truly done there as well. 3-1. So a bit of an anti-climax of the campaign, and as like I say, we peaked in season three, and we've never been anywhere near since. So finances-wise, how we're looking, and overall balance is up to £66 million. Budgets-wise, transfer budget for this season, we've almost got £30 million. Wage budget-wise, 649 k and we're currently spending 418 k there. Debts and loans-wise, £30 million in debt. Just, just take it. Just take me transfer debt. We've got to be sorted for team. We really have. When we look at squad dynamics and how we're looking, team keys is excellent, club atmosphere is good, and so is managerial support. I've got a couple of players that want new deals. Top influencers-wise, then... I've got eight players to support us, ten players that have no real opinion of us, but nobody opposes us. And then looking at the squad, where's the rest of my squad? Like, where's everybody gone? So here we go, we sold some players, which might explain why we've performed so poorly. Look near here then, Nuno Moreira has gone off to Aston Villa in the Championship for £15 million. Yes, we spent 230 k on him. That obviously was an offer that was too good to refuse and have accepted it. And Thiago Moraes has gone for £51 million to Wolfsburg. And he's had a stormer there as well. Five goals in his first nine appearances. So that probably says why we've fallen apart. We've basically taken the best part of £67 million into transfers in the January transfer window. And obviously because I've been simulating forward, I haven't been able to bring anybody in to replace them. And that is my squad. Genuinely, my squad, all I can name there is 16 players. That is it, 17 players, sorry, with Mingo in there as well. So, my squad was depleted, and that is potentially why we've ended up in trouble. So, looking at goals wise, then, Petr Musa got 44 goals this season, Saluit with 22, Zedas with 18, he also got 18 assists as well, and Halil Derisogalu got 15 goals. So, in fairness, the players that I've brought in have done a decent job for us. Obviously, there's other players in there. Musa has been tearing it up season after season, and I'd expect that to look like it when we look here. So Musa with 44 goals, let's have a look and see how that performed as far as the league goes then. So player overview wise, Musa was the top goal scorer in the league again with 30 goals, but only one clear of Darwin Nunes from Benfica with 29, but I think every single season, bar one, when Musa had an absolute shocker, didn't he? When we look at the history, he had like a 13 goal season, don't know what happened there. But goals every single season. If you've not used this guy, I've never even heard of him. Give him a go in one of your saves. Like, he has been prolific for us. But looking at the highest average rating, Zaras with a 7.75. He also had the most assists with 18. Best pass completion was Lovato with 97%. Most played the match awards was Moose with 11. Most yellow cards was Mangas, Barrow and Kyle with 15 apiece. And most red cards, Santi Ramos Mingo with 2. But what about team stats wise? And so team stats wise, we scored 97 which is the best. Goals conceded 29 which is the second best. Yellow cards wise, 92 which is the worst. Red cards wise though, 4 which is the third worst. And average attendance was 6 best. So looking then at my milestones, I was hired as the manager in 2021. We won the Alliance Cup in 2023 but then 2024 we won the Europa Conference League and we won the Portuguese Premier League obviously and we won the Alliance Cup as well so we haven't been sensational there however we have won four bits of silverware in five seasons that's a that's a good achievement for Boa Vista but then when we look at the job overview then so I brought in a total of 37 players for a total of 46 and a half million that's more than I thought Sold 44 players and brought in 144 million. So I've nearly brought in an extra 100 million pound in revenue. Highest transfer fee spent was 12 million pound on Devi Soglu. And the highest fee received was 50 more million pound, obviously, from Raya's this season. 
there you go. So, total game time then was 1,785 days, and I spent 1,634 days, 91% of this, on holiday. But we did some good stuff. Shout out to my assistant manager, who's absolutely tearing it up. But yes, that is it. So, I would say that's a successful rebuild. Bit of an anti-climax at the end there, when we threw it all away. We peaked far too early. However, the challenge was to win one Portuguese Premier League, and we did that. So, everything else, you know, is just a bonus towards it. So, yes... Thank you very much for watching. Like I say, if you've got this far and you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. But thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and I'll catch you later. Ta-ra.